Hey guys, CB Super. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use transform node and a spline editor to animate basic loops and also how to use expressions to drive really basic animation. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so here we are in Fusion. It's a very basic composition that I've already set up here. All I have is a simple ellipse connected to a background, and then I have a couple of transform nodes. Now, these transform nodes are the nodes that I'm actually going to be using to animate. And then I just have a background that's merged in with this comp just so we have a black background just so it looks a little nice so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a really quick 40 frame animation using some keyframes and we're going to do that in this first transform node just to show you the basic concept of making loops with the spline editor so i'm going to start my playhead here over on the zero frame i'm just going to key the center i'm going to go about 10 frames forward and i'm just going to move this ellipse up i'm going to skip the 20 mark and go straight to the 30 mark and I'm going to bring it all the way down and then I'm going to end it on 40 and I want it to come back to the very center of my composition. I'm just going to go into the center Y and I'm going to just type in 5 just so I know that it's perfect. And the reason I want it to come all the way back to the center is because I want it to be absolutely perfect. When I turn this into a loop, I don't want there to be some kind of skip or jump in the animation. So let's take a look at what we've done here. Very simple. Now we notice that it stops at frame 40, but we can go all the way to frame 119, which is actually frame 120. For some reason, Fusion likes to start at zero, and even though it goes to 120 frames, it will only show 119, because the first frame, which I would consider frame one, is actually frame zero. All right, so we have our animation set. Let's go ahead and turn this into a loop. I'm just going to get rid of this inspector for now, and I'm going to tap on the spline editor. So all of our animation takes place inside of this transform one, and we've edited the center displacement. So I'm just going to click on this top transform, and it's going to go ahead and load in the keyframes for that transform. Now, if you don't see this for whatever reason, you've messed it up and maybe it's somewhere off, you can either use your middle mouse button to try and find it, or you can use the command button and scroll out and hopefully you'll be able to find it. You can also use this little uh, button over here, it's zoom to fit, and that'll bring it back into view. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna command and scroll out a little bit just so we can kind of better see what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna select all of these keyframes. There should only be four keyframes. I'm gonna right click inside of this panel. I'm gonna come up to set loop and I'm gonna choose this first one, which is loop. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see that it has created additional loops. Now you can't actually edit these loops by clicking on them. They don't have any physical keyframes that you can use to edit those, but you can actually still edit it by coming over here and changing these keyframes around. And you'll notice that it also updates all of the subsequent loops. So I'm going to command Z that to undo that. I'm going to click off this spline editor. All right now you notice that the loop will continue and this loop will continue pretty much indefinitely. I can even elongate this composition and it will continue to go pretty much the entire length of that composition. I'm going to go ahead and command Z that and jump back into Fusion. So now that we have this basic animation of this ellipse just going up and down, we can start adding some different things into this using this second transform node. Personally, I like to keep all of my animations in their own transform nodes. Once I've transformed a node and I've added keyframes, you'll notice that there is this little diamond over here indicating that there are keyframes somewhere inside of this node. If you click on this one, you'll notice there is no diamond on the right-hand side. Also, the name will move over from the center to the left. And that's just one way to know where keyframes have been edited. All right, so inside of the transform tube, you're gonna go ahead and double click on it or click on the inspector. I'm going to drive the position in a different way. I'm going to use an expression, and it's a really simple expression. In order to drive it left to right, it's going to be in the center X. So I'm going to go ahead and double click inside the center X box. I'm going to use the equal sign, press enter, and now that's going to open up an expression. So this expression, you'll notice that it's missing the 0.5. There's a comma there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor in between the comma in the first bracket, and I'm just gonna type in a simple expression of time divided by, we'll just use the entire frame length, which is 120. And I'm gonna click off of it, and now if I come over to the beginning, you notice the ball will start at the beginning of the composition, or the farthest left, and it's gonna make its way to the right. So that's how you can drive animations using both expressions and loops. We can also use loops at different intervals to give us somewhat of a randomized loop. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that might look like. So in this transform, 
I'm going to come over to where I animated this center and I'm just going to right click. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set this back to the default. You can also remove the expression. You can also just come over here and click the reset button if you want. I'm going to come back to the zero frame and I'm just going to key this center. Now I'm going to come to the frame 10. I'm going to move this over to the left. I'm going to skip frame 20. I'm going to come over to frame 30. I'm going to come over here all the way to the right. And then instead of going to frame 40, I'm actually going to come to frame 36. And I'm just going to double click in the center X, type in 0.5. And just like I made this into a loop earlier, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to open up the spline editor, get rid of the inspector. I don't want to affect any of the loops that are already in this first transform. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this to turn it into a box. Now I can still see the loops, but I'm not able to edit them. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to select all four of those keyframes for the second transform. I'm going to right click, come up to set loop and loop. Now you'll notice if we look down the line here, and it's pretty light, but we can still see that these loops are changing as they go on because they end at different frames. So they're going to continue to space out further and further as time proceeds. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the spline editor, click off just so I can see this a little bit better. Every time it ping pongs, it goes to a slightly different location. So if we were to extend this even further out, it's going to keep bouncing in different directions, which is pretty interesting. Now you could make your own little loop animations like this and you can make them so they vary it up a little bit. You could also add modifiers to give it even more variation. But this is just one way you can drive real simple animations, uh, especially for using this in either motion graphics. There's tons of different uses for this. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. This is just a really quick video on how to use both the transform node and the spline editor to make basic loops and then how to animate using expressions. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.